So it's two, it's two o'clock. So we're gonna do a Q and A session till about three. So any any guys, anything you guys have any questions about? Um, not about today's meeting specifically, but about the art of writing, um, something about publishing, something about um, you know dealing with Amazon ads, whatever, whatever you got. Yes. I got a question. Uh, we had a, a great uh, uh, presenter here. I can't remember her name right now, but uh, she's talking about screenplays. Oh, Jamie Angle. Jamie, 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 Jamie. Um, and I was wondering, is, um, is she going to come back for another round of talks? Or? Probably not this year because she's she's actually busy working. She's got some filmmaking going on. She's got a bunch of stuff on her plate. Um, but I'll probably try and have her to come back next year. Yeah. Early yeah. next year. It was really, really good. Oh, it was very good. She's a lot of fun. She's yeah. very animated and she's just got she's a wealth of information too. She's so. a you can look, look her up at the right angle.com. The right W R I T E angle dot com. E M G L E. When I was vice president of the public guild, she was on the board of directors. Okay. That was a while back. Yeah. Well, she was a board of, she was one of the members of the board with me uh, just uh, recently, but um, unfortunately she had to leave because she had so many, like again, she had so many things on her plate. and yeah. So she just resigned from the board. But yeah, she was, she was great. She had a lot of good ideas, and so yeah, we really loved her. So yeah, she's definitely going to come back for sure to speak. Yes. I forgot to mention when I was up there, I sent you some emails about the Christmas in July thing. Yes. If anybody's interested, there's going to be a Christmas in July in Titusville, mm -hmm. and um, it's a book selling event, right? Yeah. It, well, it's not just books; it's arts and crafts. Arts and crafts, okay. But you can rent your table to sell books. Okay. So do you know how much the tables are? Sixty-four dollars. That's not terrible. Tables, so two can but they're indoors, right? Together. They're indoors. indoors. Yes, I think I, I think I got one. I got a, one or two tables for the guild. I think. Did you? I think I did, and I think I got them for indoors. I'm like, I want indoors. <laughs> I yeah, want, in July, no, we don't want to be outside. So yeah. Oh, okay. Well, I, I think it's the end end of July, right? End of July. Thirty first. Thirty first. Yes. Where yes. Are they be in, in Titusville. The Civic Center in Titusville. Civic. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Sh we should uh, we Rose, should put that send me info and I'll put it on the website. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Or even just the, you know, I probably won't reprint everything, but it's on the web somewhere, right? Yeah. 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 I'll I'll put a uh, yeah, I'll put a little story and then I'll put a link to where they can register and okay. all that. I rented a table, so I've got yeah. a table so Yeah, I know I rented one for the guild too, so yeah. And I said, as long as it's indoors, I'm good because I'm not doing outdoors in the summertime. It's uh, too risky. And I did that once with the Melbourne uh, downtown. Melbourne had um, this was <laughs> back in '18. Oh my gosh! And I had this little canopy and whatever, and the storm came and it just blew everything away. And I'm like, nope, not doing this again. <laughs> Learned my lesson. Even with um, even with the when we did the first. First, first or second Cocoa Village, I think was, uh, was it last year? The last year in March or the Something one like I can't remember. Yeah, the yeah the, our, our canopy blew away, it got destroyed, and oh. along Among with others. about 20 other vendors' canopies oh, yeah. got destroyed. So we had to buy a new canopy, and I'm like, no. Uh, well, I mean, you know, it's kind of hard to predict how, how strong the winds are going to be. So because of it, because Cocoa Village is, is like by the river also, oh. and uh, there's a lot of wind there. But last last Saturday when we went, oh Lord, it was so hot. It was awful. But we had four people there. It was me, Jay, um, Margaret Livermore, and who else came? Someone else. Who's the fourth person? Oh my God, I'm so bad. <laughs> um, I can't remember who the fourth person was. Gentlemen, um I don't yeah. remember his anyway, name. another it was another member. I, I I can't remember off the top of my head right now. But anyway, so it was four of us. So we were we were pretty busy. We were pretty busy. We sold everybody sold a good amount of books, so we were good. We were happy. So but it was really hot. I'm sure we got all nice little color, even just under the canopy. Mm -hmm. Wow, it was it was that powerful. So anyway. All right, any other questions? Come on. 
You guys don't have any questions about the, the art of writing? You know, anything about publishing on Amazon, KDP? Any questions about that? Come. Go ahead. Oh, uh, I had a question on uh, Neanderthal. Yes. Do, do, they, do they also publish like screenplay? Like, well, if you, if, you write a, if you write a screenplay in the form of like an ebook, yes. Okay. All right. Um, but if you write a screenplay that you would like to submit for to be turned into a, like a movie or something, then that's a whole different animal. Yeah. And I don't have any information on that. Yeah. Because um, it's um, you'd have to find who the producers are right. and all that. So it's yeah, a, it's a different an animal. Agent for that. Correct. Yeah. You have to get an agent. Yes, sir. I have a little bit of information on that. Um, I took one of my books and submitted it to a group in California that's called Tail Clips. And there's now about four of these groups. Mm -hmm. So Tail Clips, if you can imagine an MLS book that lists houses for sale, mm -hmm. and all the agents can look at them. Right. What they do is they list all of the screenplays or books. Okay. You can actually just list your books. Okay. And they go around and present these at different conventions and to different people. And mm -hmm. uh, if it, it was less than $100, and the advantage is you can't be out west at all those houses right. and at all those conventions. Right. And so for under $100, um, if you wanted it to get into the attention of the West Coast film community, yeah. then that's one way of doing it. Ken okay. um, oh, Leggett. Like it. it was Ken Leggett like who was at the all picture. of the groups, but that one was called Tailflix, T-A-L-E-F-L-I-C-K-S. Tailflix.com? Um, .org? I know Tailflix is the name of the group. I okay. don't know if I can immediately tell you the, All right. the uh, site. Uh, okay. I'll look it up. T-A-L-E-F-L-I-C-K-S. Yes, for screenplays okay. or for books that you would like to see turned into a screenplay. And I thought their deal after that was pretty good, which basically you get all of any option money and then they get a small percentage if you actually get a full-fledged deal. Yeah, yeah, of course. I mean, and they've been producing 10 to 12 a year. Mm -hmm. I don't know how many they receive. Yeah, that's great. But all the people have been involved in the film industry out there, including the Netflix, the Hulus, the ones that are making their own movies independently of the big studios. Correct. So it gives you a, another uh, outlet. And they do represent to actors and actresses, wow. or I guess everybody's an actor now, but right. uh, they represent to them because sometimes they'll get a script and they'll or, or an idea and they'll go to their studio and of course. say, I want to do this. Wow, that's that, that, would, that would be great. So that is a way. I mean, it's every author's dream to have his or her book turned into a movie or a, or a series. And I, I, I got a few bites from it. I haven't, it, it hasn't resulted in anything yet, but um, mm -hmm. let me see if I can um, get that website right now. Yeah, you'll yeah, it's it's tail, it's tail flick .com. Com, okay. Okay, very good. Thank you very much for that. Tailflick.com, everybody. It does give you another place that you, if you list yourself and have a, a record, if you show people where you are all over the internet, uh, that's another listing that you mm -hmm. have. And you write it. They don't write it. Okay. So you write what goes on that page. So basically you're writing like a, like a bio. Just like, like you if know. you were doing an Amazon page, okay. well, an author there page, you go. Yeah. Um, and you get to say what's on it and send up the cover. Very good. That's great. Thank you, Malcolm. I appreciate that. All right, everybody got that done? Who doesn't want their book turn, turned into a, a movie? Come on. <laughs> well, I, I remember, you know, maybe several years ago. Uh -huh. It's changed now, but several years ago. Um, if your book, if you owned the rights to the book, and if you were published, they didn't want to have nothing to do with you. Okay. The only the studios and the people that made the movies only wanted people that were writing scripts for them. Otherwise, you had to be represented by a lawyer. Okay. Well. Because they want the copyright. Well, movie. considering that, like, for example, like, let's take the series Bosch. Does anybody know Bosch? Yeah. yeah. On Amazon? Okay. That's Michael, Michael Connolly, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, I know he's one of the big guys. I understand that. But that, that's, what, that's what Amazon does. They always take 
Um, something that's very interesting in the character of Bosch, by the way, he's got an Azon series, by the way, coming up very soon. Ooh, can't no, wait. It's already, out. it's already out? Okay, cool. Thank you, because I haven't had time to watch it, but I like to binge watch. I love him. He's amazing. Anyway. Um, yeah, he's very good. Bridgerton, same thing. Oh, Bridgerton, yeah, I know. Bridgerton is... Uh, that that's another one I really like. I, I just watched the second one. I finished watching that, and then so, so I'm the watching Outlander now. So you're saying the independents may go for it? Yes, they're they're doing rights. they're doing independent mm -hmm. now because they're because now Hollywood is is kind of to my understanding now to my opinion I will do my opinion here. I'm not doing facts, but my opinion is that Hollywood because everybody's live streaming, live streaming, live streaming. Hollywood is kind of dying away. Okay, the old school MGM, all that. Now all these have all these companies have kind of switched to these live stream. You know, mm -hmm. there's Peacock, there's uh, Paramount Plus, all this other stuff. Mm -hmm. So, and every one of those live those streaming services, they have they ma they have their own production companies that make their own movies and series and all that, like Amazon and Netflix and all <laughs> that. So. That's why they, they're, they're always looking for, like probably that website is a great source because they're always looking for talented writers. Outlander? Anybody watch Outlander? Yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Best book boyfriend ever. Oh, my God. Yeah. He's, he's so... Best book boyfriend ever. He is like... Anyway, I'm not even... <laughs> but anyway, but she, she's an indie author. She's an indie author, guys. Okay, so... And the those, series is fantastic. It's amazing. It's amazing. And they always... Sometimes it starts off a little slow, obviously, like they all do, but then it gets really, really good. Yeah, so. the, well, she, Outlander, the first book was, I mean, yeah, it was a brick. Yeah. She's not an indie author, though. She's an author, author. She's, she's an author, author? author? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. She's published. All right. Okay, I take that back. Fine. I thought she was indie. I heard somewhere that she was indie. No, she's okay, not. Okay, she's not. That's the Fifty Shades. Of Break my girl. bubble. Break yeah. Fifty Shades. Yeah. She's the indie. Girl, Fifty Shades. Right? She's an indie. Yeah. She's yeah. an indie. She's not got, anymore, but she was. Oh yeah. She's yeah. Yeah, and obviously, uh, what's her J.K. Rowling too. She wasn't indie, but she got she got rejected. I don't know, like fifty times or something yeah. like that. And then finally, she got that her chance, and, and she made she made good of it. So that's good. Diana Dabbledon, who wrote Outlander, yeah. got her start writing the Scrooge McDuck comics, and decided she wanted to write a novel. Oh, okay. That, that was her first novel. Was All Outlander. right, Outlander. Okay. Well, anyway, it's excellent. She's a, she's a great writer, and those actors are fantastic, and I just love the whole thing. So, anyway, um, but but what I'm hearing is the industry now has opened up to indies, and you know, because we have great ideas. I mean, our books are are I always I always say when people are passing by, I don't know if you you heard me say it many oh, yeah. times, that we write better than the big guys. <laughs> I say it all the time, and and people are like. Yeah, because there's some people who say, oh, I only, I only read yeah. Patterson, I only read, you know, John Grisham, blah, blah, blah. I'm like, well, I used to read them too. But Still if, you, if you give us a chance, yeah. yeah. No, I don't anymore. Right yeah. I don't. I'm sorry. I, if I'm going to read a book, it's going to be an indie book. I'm sorry. I just, because I'm so passionate about yeah. self-publishing self and all that stuff and the guild and I have so much, I refuse to read anything else now. And they put their heart and soul into that book, whereas some of those authors, you know, they have, may not have, even be writing it They have anymore. ghost writers. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So it's who knows who you read. It's just the name. Right. It's just their name. You know, I don't even know if the ghost writers get mentioned in, in their book. I don't even know. But anyway, I, I refuse to read those big guys. I know I used to read them before. Before I was a writer, I used to read them all the time. For Grisham, I love Grisham, you know. My Wilbur Smith was one of my favorites. You know. Is Nora Roberts our staff? Nora Roberts. Think? Because she's got a book like coming out. Oh yeah, so of course, yeah. They all have ghostwriters, all of them. Yeah. All of them. Yeah. All of them. Yeah. Don't don't let them tell you otherwise because it's just BS. A, such a disappointment. <laughs> yeah. yeah. No, but you know, I mean, I mean, they they obviously have to read the story and they have to approve it and all that stuff and they probably change it around to give it their their little you know um, flair to it and all that. I'm sure they do that, um, but that's the editor's thing that does that. It's not even them. It's their editor, mm -hmm. you know. So. Like reading but, Danielle Steele, you read one, you wrote all of them. <laughs> uh, the same story, just a different name. Correct, different situation, different names. Yeah, I've, I've read a few of those when I was younger. Yeah, oh, yeah. I refuse. So, yeah. Just another comment. Every state has a film commission. 
Mm -hmm. Florida has a film commission. Yes. And that would be a place to start <clears throat> to try That's to get something idea. made, especially if it was set in Florida. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. But whatever state it's set in, mm -hmm. they have an incentive to bring a movie production to their state. It publicizes their state, hopefully in a good way. And it also mm -hmm. brings money in during the production. Time. I know for a fact that Georgia is very active in film production yes. and series productions. Very active. North Carolina so. was for a while mm -hmm. in, around Wilmington almost mm -hmm. to the point of having uh, almost being like another uh, Hollywood. Mm -hmm. And that's backed off some. But yeah. anyway, that's the show, idea. The show Outer Banks is bringing it back up mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. on Netflix, mm -hmm. obviously. Mm -hmm. And there were a couple of those. Uh, Dawson's Creek was there. Mm -hmm. Dawson's Creek, yeah, that was a good one, yeah. What were wow. those novels Nicholas Spark always in with the guy down there? Sorry to run the books. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, uh, several of those. Uh, the ones that were made in the movie. Well, um, Nice and Redan, I think. But obviously, it was North Carolina. Yeah. I think that house nice. left went in this last storm. Mm -hmm. I think it fell down. Oh, yeah? Yeah. It did, wow. And they lost 20. Wow, is that the storm that was up there? And yeah. Okay, wow, that's sad. Anyway, all right, so, uh, yes sir, uh, go one ahead. One more question, um, is the Space Coast Writers Guild associated with the Writers Guild of America? No, no, we are a local Writers Guild and we uh, are all by ourselves. We're a, a 501c3 mm -hmm. a nonprofit organization. All right. Any other questions about writing, publishing? Well, you guys are all experts, right? <laughs> yes. I have yes. to make a comment. Yes. The journey of my book, personally, for me, took three years. One year was because I decided to write it as a memoir in the beginning. Okay. And then I decided it really needed to be an action story. Okay. And then I changed it into a novel. Okay. In my search for an editor, I ran down some real rabbit holes. I'm not going to mention any names or anything. Mm -hmm. But I told the person's her sentence, do not change the storyline because, because it was a memoir originally. Mm -hmm. Correct. It is a day-by-day -day account. Mm -hmm. And something that might seem insignificant now, the reason it's mentioned is because later this becomes a big deal. Mm -hmm. okay. Okay, if it wasn't significant, it didn't make the story, okay? So I had that problem, got mm -hmm. through that problem. Okay. Then I said, I happen, I'm not an expert in many things, but in horses and horsemanship in some aspects of it, because it's a vast industry, I am actually an expert. Mm -hmm. I said, please do not fiddle with any passages that relate to horseback riding, training of horses, breeds of horses, blah, blah, blah. Of course. I had, uh, this is what I call editing by computer, rather mm -hmm. than using one's brain. Mm -hmm. okay. I had so many changes to my manuscript, I almost at one point had a nervous breakdown. Mm -hmm. Things like, um, here's a good one. Um, I went to the horse show and I packed a spare bride. Bridle. Okay. Bridle on a horse's head. You don't take a spare bride unless you're the Taliban. Okay. And just incident after incident of this, I'm like, people are not reading what they're editing. So just caveat and uh, whatever it is. Mm -hmm. No, I mean, that's very valuable you. information okay. because yeah. um, not every editor is the same. And Correct, and, it, and they don't, uh, and then I finally found someone who I said, here's my list of words that you cannot change. We argued about two things. One was dog breed, uh, the uh, cosmos says uh, like Labrador retriever, small r. I'm like, mm -hmm. every dog owner in the country is gonna have <laughs> a fit when their dog gets a small R on retriever because I had a Chesapeake Bay retriever and a Chesapeake retriever. Right. It's not Retrievers in capital, retriever. yes. Yeah. Yes. Okay. So we I got over that with my other editor, but mm -hmm. other than that, but did they give you a rebate on the editing? <laughs> uh, there was almost and I shouldn't say this, um, but 
by considerably the action, and it was uh, more expensive than worthwhile. Yeah, so you had to pay up, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. They won't do it on a contingent. Yeah. You know, there's not enough. I, to me, it was massive amounts of yeah. money. I know. But to a lawsuit, it was like this is a peanut case. Yeah. So. Right. so we should talk about ways to avoid that. One is insist on at least two references from the person. Correct. If the person hasn't ever edited, they need to go edit for free for someone. Correct. Let's, yeah. build, let's do some yeah, edit. To if build they, your to build your brand new, that's that's a little it's wonderful they want to help, but yeah. you know, um, but but at least a couple of references. There may be other ways of verifying too. But. You want some water, sir? No, I'm good. You good? I'll probably survive. Okay. <laughs> I hope so. <laughs> Are you gonna live? I don't know about that. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Well, that's ago, um, that's uh, some great advice for sure. Yeah, I mean, and also proofreading. I mean, anything that has has to regard with, uh, like, if I I can tell you that I've you know I've published many books on Amazon because I published thirteen books. So, there's mm -hmm. my examples right there. You know, all done by my actually a couple of them are even with Ingram Spark. So I even have that all, under my belt. But you know, you gotta show you gotta show me show me what you can do, and that's the very good rule of thumb for. For especially indies who are starting out, who are looking for editors, who are looking for proofreaders and, and, and cover cover people, yes. I came across a, a function on my computer, uh, Word, that I really didn't exercise for years. And then now that I did find Let me it, guess, read aloud. It's read aloud. And oh, I love that. After, you, after you've gone that. through the Grammarly two or three times, you do the read aloud. Uh -huh. And if it just doesn't sound right and it's wrong, you know, you can, you, you can, it's like a storyteller. It's very, it's a very, well, there, Microsoft is making it more and more human <laughs> sounding as, as the years go by. Mm -hmm. um, the voices was, are getting better. Voices are getting better. You Maybe can pick a female voice, better. a male voice and all that. But it is, it, for me, I love that feature. Yeah, Especially I, when I write short stories and, and, and stuff like that because I want I don't want to, because he's my editor. Yeah, yeah, I'm not going to lie to you, he's my editor. But sometimes, you know, he's busy doing stuff, and I just want to get this short story out. Because what I do every month is I send out a newsletter every month to my fans, um, and um, I, give, I always give them a free story, a free short story with every newsletter that I send out, if they want to read it. So I'm always, you know, writing. I'm always writing a short story whenever, whenever I can. So instead of bothering him all the time, I, I just use the read a lot, and I absolutely love it. All it catches everything. Yeah. If you're good here, but you yeah, gotta, yeah. you gotta pay attention to listen. Yes. Right? Well, it, 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 it's an accident that happened to me. I just yeah. accidentally put it on. Yeah. And I said, okay. Whoa. Yeah. It's, great. it's great. I love it. Yeah. It's a great feature. It it it's mispronounces word. some things. Oh, it does. Yeah. yeah. I think it's on the. Yeah, we can. Actually, when you hit review, the, the review tab. We can actually even do a demo of some of the stuff one meeting. You know, mm -hmm. oh, word is. I'll tell you, word can be a real pain in the butt sometimes. <laughs> the way that you have to do things, but I'll tell you that read aloud, because she'll be like she said, she'll be. We're both in in the in the I'm office. Gonna, I'm going to show you one. And yeah, pull up word. We're both in the office. She's here and I'm here. We're like almost this distance from each other. And I can be, I'm involved in, we're both involved in, in other things. So she'll be, she'll be, start doing a read aloud and I'll be doing something, but I've got that ear open because that's my good ear. Okay, let me, let me and, show you. So and you I'll say, whoop, 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 stop, stop. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And she'll stop okay. and I'll go, now play that back. Now this is you now know. this is a, just an outline of something that I'm going to be writing in a couple of years. Let me right get now. out of it. Let me show you where it is. Read aloud is right there. You see it up there? It says read aloud. It's very very easy. So if you click on I it, I really think can. It's at the header cursor. Outline. Julietta Capoletti is the original Juliet. So and then Romeo Montecchi is the original Romeo. The very last scene will be mentioned in the foreword of the novella. See, you stop it, you make your correction, and then you can continue on. The male protagonist will be Tiziano Romeo Montecchi, who owns a vineyard in. Okay, so let me change these <coughs> settings. Do so I remember you can change the pace, the speed? You, oh, yeah, you there can. It is. Yeah, you can. So let me, okay, let me change the Yeah, the reading speed up, right there. And then let's do the speed, let's do it a little bit slower. There we go. All right, and now let's hit play. 
California and he an enologist. Artist of winemaking, the vines were transported from the hills of Verona to California during the late 1800s when the monk so, let me make it a little bit faster. Let's change another, another voice. Is Gilbert Godfrey? <laughs> 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 All right, let's do more. <laughs> 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 Family immigrated to California. In 1964, See, so the much great much fires in California well, destroyed the Montecchi vineyards and burned their home down too. Yeah. But the great resilience of the Montecchi family paid off in 60 years later. They are one of okay so that's a really good feature i really yeah. really like it thank you for bringing that up by the way while we're in word of yes. something we were talking about back here if you are in your editor and a change is recommended if you say ignore yeah it will ignore that error forever in all the documents that you use not just this document all right. really? If you, it, it gives you a choice, ignore once or ignore all. Yeah. Right, you're right. Don't ignore all. No. Unless no. you intend to never do that again, ever. Uh -huh. And the example I was given earlier was like a comma and, and then where you're linking two parts of a sentence. That comma doesn't necessarily need to be there all the time, but sometimes right. you might want it. Yeah. Yes. It might be important in the way you're writing. Correct. Uh, and so, um, ignore once is better because then you have to reset your whole, all your settings. Well, for me, I never do ignore all because I, you know, I, you know, as you guys know very well, I'm, I think you know how, you know, I'm Italian, so I, there's a lot of Italianisms in my books and everything, there's a lot of Italian names, and like I do have the Christmas Inns, all the Christmas in Venice, and Christmas in Rome, Christmas in Florence, they're all Italian names and everything, so we're always, yeah, I'm always seeing these, you know, these underlying, yeah. like, oh, well, what are you writing, you know, but, um, but I, so that's why I don't do any ignore. I always keep them. I actually don't even go because I want to make sure that the names all match, the spelling of the, of the names all match. Because if I keep them underlined, it's always in front of my face, and I don't and I don't ignore them. That's why I don't. I never use ignore. But that's that's a good thing. Don't use ignore all because yeah, it's going to do the whole the whole document. There's so. probably a table somewhere in the Microsoft directory where you can see the ignore alls and get rid of them. You know what I mean? If yeah. you want to dove around oh, in there. Probably, probably is somewhere. I mean, I'm, yeah. I'm, I, I used to know Word much better because I used to, um, I used yeah. to write like um, uh, procedures and policies for when I, when I, when I was an administrative assistant <laughs> a long time ago. <laughs> anyway, um, I used to write the policies and everything, and, and so I would, you know, I would use that. I was a lot of features that I, don't, I just don't use anymore now. You're just writing a novel. It's like, yeah, okay. So yeah, I, have a, basic. Yes. I have a new laptop, does that mean that, is, and I still have the writings in there, is it carried over to that, or is it? Unless you have saved it in the cloud. The, it, no, it's not carrying the it's document. It's saved in the cloud. Right. It's saved in the cloud, then yeah, it'll carry it over. Saved in the cloud. Yeah. But you have to have the Microsoft. No, code. I'm talking about the ignore all thing. Oh, no, I don't think so. You I, think, I think that's no. on the device. If you have a new okay. version of Word, let me, let me install it. Sure. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Carry it over your same Word files, maybe not. Because if, if you save them in the in the cloud, I think if you ignore all in the cloud, then once you bring them up on your computer, then probably it still stands. Yeah. I would say. Right. So how do you yeah. do it? I don't know. Yeah, well, reset, um, reset. That's probably a good question for you. Much so she is saying if you do the ignore all on a document, then you get a new computer and then you save your document on the cloud. Well, once you, get, you you download a new computer, I think the ignore all saves saves the, the document in the cloud, so it's still. And how do you go retrieve all the ignore alls to not ignore all? Do you know how to do that? But that would be a function of the Microsoft Word program mm -hmm. and not the individual document. Yeah. Right. Correct. So the ignore yeah. all would be part of Word yeah. and Correct. not it wouldn't matter what your document mm -hmm. is doing. Well, yeah, I yeah I can you know I can look into that. Yeah. Well, I'm just going to go up to the little girls' room real quick. I'll be back, guys. All right. But you guys... I can... Uh, oh, any okay. other... Anybody who knows anything, ask yeah. anything. I have another suggestion. Go I've right ahead. I've been through this painful procedure. When you get, gra if you get grammarly, 
Just get the free stuff. That's yeah. it. Don't go into paying the fifteen hundred dollars <laughs> or whatever it is, the advance thing, because it'll keep you in that do loop that this lady was talking about where the editor comes and starts changing things. Mm -hmm. And by the time it finished with you, you won't even recognize your story. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So the, I, I run Grammarly, run it two or three times, uh, the free <coughs> stuff. And even that is not exactly right. I'll give you an example. If you go into Grammarly and you say, you have a sentence that says, my grandfather's farm. The grandfather is the possessive. Grandfather is, mm -hmm. so you would have grandfather. A apostrophe, apostrophe yes. yes. Okay. However, it doesn't do it. It ignores it. So what you do is you go in and you say, oh, that's, I, I know that's through the reading guy. It doesn't sound right, so you put the apostrophe in there. You go through, the next time you make a change and you go and rerun that whole thing, it'll take that comma out, it'll take that apostrophe out. So it, Grammarly is good. It's a tool, but you have to be You have to be very careful of the changes you make, because once, once you make the changes, you don't assume wholeheartedly that it's going to be in there embedded. And it also doesn't like certain phrases. Yeah. Like in order to, it does not like in order to. It wants you to just put to. And sometimes in order to is a better flow. Right? Yeah. So you have to pay attention to but that. It's, but it's a, it's a great oh, fantastic tool. tool. For free. Yep. <laughs> and, and Word, I think, is starting to tap into Grammarly. Yeah, they, yeah, they have. And so a lot of the stuff um, well, it's picking up all this Italianisms here, but, you know, I, I don't know why it doesn't like artists, um, winery. Uh, usually these are misspelled, or what it thinks are misspelling. The blue, the blue is grammatical is, error, is and if gr she has grammatical, it, yeah. yes, it's grammatical, and she's yeah. got, she said this was an outline, yeah, prob so yeah, sure she doesn't have, have it I'm guessing it was right, right. an uppercase A there. It may want, That's my guess. Well, it may want the um, artist or something like that, you know, to give it sentence structure. Yeah, it wants a, a capitalization okay. there. Dan, I'm sure you remember when we were first getting started with computers, which is now we're talk, telling our age, mm -hmm. and this statement, garbage G in, garbage out. G go. Yep. And so whoever's writing Grammarly and editing Grammarly, whatever their level of education is, mm -hmm. their understanding of English, mm -hmm. their understanding of traditional standard English, uh, as we would find in most of the books that we would read. And I'm not trying to put anybody down, I'm just saying there is a standard for that, and that's not always, everybody's not always coming at it from the same uh, mm -hmm. starting point. Um, so there could be some, some concerns there. Some of the things that I used to see, I don't see them as much anymore. I wondered, where did these people get what they're trying to offer as a suggestion? I don't see that as much anymore. I don't find those, those crazy uh, suggested corrections, but uh, it, it, it does matter. And that's, that's good advice. So anything we can advise each other of to save a thousand or $500 or whatever, there's enough expenses when we're independently publishing. Uh, it doesn't have to be expensive, but some of the things that, that people want to offer you, I saw a, a thing this week. Is anyone here doing anything with Book Baby? Book Baby, I heard of them. Mm -hmm. well, I checked them out when yeah, I so, started. So Book Baby, I mean, they, they, they start out by talking to you like they're gonna help you self-publish, but then there's a $1,700 package and 15% of what you make on top of if they place you with Amazon. Amazon on an ebook is already getting 30% because you're getting 70. And with your print books, it's even more. Oh yeah. And so you have to just, you, know, you don't have to be a lawyer, but you do have to be careful. And this group, yes. groups like this is where you can benefit because you could fire up a question to half a dozen of your friends here, or to Dan and have him pass it on. Correct. Um, to to how how to you know what what is everybody's experience in these things? 
Right, and if you, ever, if you guys ever have any questions about anything that you're going through, whatever, or if you've come along these websites who say, oh, hey, we'll publish for you, we'll do all your work for you, especially social media sites, so mm -hmm. like, yes. pe like sites like BookBub and, yes. and, you know, there's a whole bunch of them, Read C, there's a whole bunch of them out there that are just like, they have these packages that they charge you with. So you just gotta be really weary about these people because indie authors, I mean, we're great writers, but we don't have a lot of money, you know? I mean, yeah. that's the bottom line, We don't, because if we did, we wouldn't be indie authors, you know? But there's so many, so many um, companies that are that are, take advantage of that, yeah. of the ignorance, and I'm that not talking about stupidity, but ignorance of people who don't know the industry, and so yeah. they're being taken advantage of. Naivety. It's terrible, I hate it. There are plenty of companies that are willing to separate you from your hard-earned money, yeah. Yeah. and yeah. not give you much in return. Yeah. And she still gets, um, she gets um, voicemails all the time, or, or phone yeah. calls, and it's like, um, you know, oh, well, I'm from gonna, something or other, and uh, we're interested in promoting your book, and blah, blah, blah. Mm -hmm. I just, I don't even, I just delete them and say, yeah, you got another book. So when I published my first book, because, again, I don't know if you guys know the story, but I used a vanity publisher called Author House. Or if you guys are, are familiar with Author House? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So this is my first book. Mm -hmm. And I, I did not know anything about the industry when I published this book. I knew absolutely nothing. So I was online, I was sending, um, I was sending my, my manuscript, you know, can you publish? I was sending it to, but I wasn't getting any response back because I didn't know about query letters, I didn't know anything, anything about the industry. I was completely ignorant. Um, so these guys were the only ones who, uh, 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 Dorrance was another one who came back and they wanted like $11,000 to publish my book. <laughs> Seriously. <laughs> <laughs> like it's gotta be there's got to be another way right so these guys they charged me a thousand dollars which wasn't horribly bad but um, I have to pay for when I buy my books so when I buy this book of paperback I pay twenty dollars for this paperback oh, so God. and I and I can't even sell it at twenty dollars it's not it, it just doesn't so I bought a whole bunch and I put them away and I bought this another bunch of them where they gave me like a discount because I bought like 30 or 40 of them or something. So I keep them away, I have them all, all away stored. So I can sell them at 15 each because that's what I sell them for. 15 and then $10 for part two and $25 you could get your set. Um, but what, and I don't know if I can republish this, I don't know if I'm bound, I have to pull out the contract and go take a look at it and all that. But I know that once they get you, they get you. That's yeah. it. Yeah. You're not so be very weary about there's Dorrance, there's the Author House, there's a few other more. They're called vanity publishers. And the reason why they're called vanity publishers. Yeah. Correct. You you gotta pay. You gotta pay to publish, you gotta pay um, to they will not edit, they they will not proofread, they won't do anything. Your mind needs to be shipped perfect. Everything is yeah. Everything's an additional charge. Mm -hmm. Now, Linda Jump, that's a member here, she says that in writing memoir, mm -hmm. she does have people who have no computer skills, right. want their story written, have the money, want to see it done. There is a place for those, mm -hmm. right. but it's not a very big group. It's right. not a very big group. And then on top of that, once you publish your book, um, they keep bugging you. Like they, when I first this came out, um, it came out in August of 17, and the Miami Book Festival was going on, <laughs> and they charged me $600 to just have my book on a shelf. I thought it was going to be a regular signing, right, where I was introducing my book, signing, yeah. people were going to yeah. stop by. No, with the book on the shelf, and I couldn't, I wasn't even allowed to stay there and take a picture of this. With my like my book being exposed, I want to take a picture from my website and all that. Because my 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 best friend, who she does my covers and she does my website and now you know all that, she she was with me because we kind of took a trip. Let's go take a trip. I'm doing the signing, you know, blah blah blah. No, leave the book there. And the, and the lady was there. She goes, No, you you're not allowed in here. You're not allowed in here. You can't. I'm like, I paid six hundred dollars for that. Oh man, I was. Living. Beyond living, it was like, yeah. so I'm like, no. And then every time they call me, oh, we want in your book, we want to introduce it to, to a producer, a Hollywood producer, and then they call you about a radio show, and, yeah. and a very famous person, never heard of this person before, mm -hmm. they, but, but you gotta pay. Oh, That's you gotta pay $1,200. They pray on your own. Oh, they just, 
The, your own Miami, family, yeah. Miami, 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 Miami Book Festival is the largest book festival in the United States. Mm -hmm. That's why so, they can... And then they, they, call, they, they call you in there. And these people are mainly, I hate to say it, I don't want to be, um, what's the word, talking about you know, um, stereotypes, but all these people are from the Philippines. <laughs> and they have these English names, <laughs> and they have these horrible, terrible accents. You can yeah. barely understand what they're saying. Um, so they're all they're all from, from those parts. It's a call center. They, they're, it's a call center. So they call you and, and you know they, they want they want to catch you to say, oh Billy, I can be on the New York Times bestseller list chart. Give me ten thousand dollars and I'll put you on there. You know. So it's just it's just it's just crazy. So be be wary of that. Really be careful. Yes. I'll just second all of what you said <laughs> because my first novel was through Author House. Oh, okay. And weekly. Several times a week, I'll get the phone calls. Yeah, you still get the phone calls? Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> this is like 12 years ago. <laughs> I'm going, have you read the novel? If you've read the novel, you'll understand why I don't want to publish the fact that I ever wrote the thing. Yeah. yeah. Right. <laughs> it was the first attempt. Yeah. And then they even, they even get the title on with with me or with all me or and it's like yeah. have you have you actually looked at the book yeah. <laughs> read the novel it's with all of me oh, it's, it's like, it just drives you crazy it's crazy i know it's just it's awful and that that really and then there's there's some um, and then i get these emails where um oh uh, we'll uh, we'll publish your your post um for you know, all over social media, and we'll we'll post you on uh, Instagram, and we'll do a thousand posts for you on Twitter and all that uh, stuff, right? Boy. And uh, and guess what they want? They want money. They want money. And so sometimes I'll I say, okay, well, how much do you want? And they have all these weird companies, but it's always the same people, right? And because they have all Gmail accounts, right. you know, it's like, come on. Um, so they they want like, uh, for example, if you want uh, your just one post is like fifty dollars, and if you want to post every day for a whole week it's like you know we'll give you a special price of a hundred dollars or whatever it's just it's crazy crazy you stuff. can do that yourself with three hashtags yeah oh yeah for three cents yeah yeah I know. of your time uh, i do That's i terrible. do that all the time i do my own social media posts i make my own memes mm -hmm. so that's you know so I'm 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 starting to learn facebook ads now mm -hmm. i'm just starting to get into it i took a I took a course and also the online courses. Be wary of those mm -hmm. two guys because mm -hmm. they're not free. You gotta pay for them. So, um, but some of them are very informative. Even if you have to pay for one or two, they're very informative. Mm -hmm. But just be careful because some of them have a lot of information that they they're gonna get to it, but at a later at a later mm -hmm. like episode or something. So it's mm -hmm. it, it's really really mind boggling sometimes. So just you know, if you have any questions, when in doubt, when in doubt. Call somebody who's who knows what they're doing. Like, call somebody like, for example, any member of the guild who's published a book, or reach out to us. And if, if I don't know someone, I will find someone who knows. Okay, reach out to me. Reach out to him. You know, we'll help you. You could also YouTube a question if you're oh, in a pinch. Yeah, you because can there is so oh, well, anything you need to do. Mm -hmm. There's a there's a tutorial somewhere free yep. on YouTube yeah. by reputable people with you know massive subscribers. Like Google too. Google I think you could learn neurosurgery on YouTube. <laughs> 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 YouTube is great. You can find absolutely step by step instruction. Step by step yeah. by step. It's yeah. really, really, really very good. Very well done. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And um, and if you Google also like Google Author House, yep. Google yeah. Lawrence, Google Vanity Publisher. And look at their yeah, reviews. Yeah. Yeah. Google Vanity Publisher and Vanity yeah. Press, and it'll give you a whole list. Oh yeah. Whole okay. gamut. So, so our newer authors might won't get discouraged, uh, or anybody maybe at home. One of the things that's cool, you have to look for the good, and when we're laying out a bunch of negative stuff right now, but one of the good things is first you have resources, like in this group. Mm -hmm. Then you have to look at it that any time you spend doing the things you need to do to accomplish your publishing, you are not spending that money. You're doing or you're learning even coming here today mm -hmm. or joining the group you're learning so that's mm -hmm. part of your investment in getting ahead of the scammers you might say correct um the other thing is the whole reason they're doing it is because there's money in it, which yeah. means there's a lot of interest which means you're a part of a big wave mm -hmm. you're part of a, a big group of people that are doing something 
accomplishing their goals, there's always going to be somebody who's going to try to take a piece of that. Like yeah. Dan said, they'll separate you from your money. Yeah. Um, yeah. But so, so really, it's a positive that this many people set up these things, and uh, but there are also some good ones from time to time. Yes. And most likely, uh, an author will be able to give you five things not to do. Somebody's published, and they'll, then they'll be, give you a couple that you should do. Yes. And and that's so that's another reason for relying on networking with each other. Correct. Right. Correct. And, and even if you if you even if you okay, so you did a good thing. You joined the the Space Coast Writers Guild. That's fantastic. But if you join other guilds like you know um, other writers groups or even a smaller writers group or a critique group, you'll benefit from it. You will definitely benefit from. It. I have I have gotten my my the beginning of my books critiqued and from different various people and. You become a better writer. Mm -hmm. You just—it just happens. It just yeah. happens. So, um, so, I never, you know, I, I am very—I I try to be a positive, as positive as I possibly can. I always look on the bright side of things. I'm, I'm never a negative, you know, thinker. I'm like, oh, it's going to get better. It's going to get better. It's going to get better. And and if you keep thinking like that, it will. So if you're thinking that, you know, I'm maybe I'm 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 in a, a bad place like right now with the editing, but in the end, what happened? You did find out the right editor, got, the and you got your book. You got your book uh, published, yeah, and you know, good. and you got your way. You know, yeah. pretty much for the most part. So, if you keep thinking positive, good things will happen. Yeah. So I'm I'm convinced of that. So, can I ask a question? Yes, In springtime. Absolutely. Okay. In so springtime, yes. Your yes. first time, first first book you're gonna get. You're mm -hmm. gonna publish yourself. Mm -hmm. I've had my book written for five years. Four years? Three, four years. But there's no like guidelines. Like, okay, you got your story written, mm -hmm. then you then what do you do next? And then what do you do next? Because mm -hmm. I jump from, oh well, I want this book over and and it's okay. there's no like book or is there a book that would be recommended That's to like yeah. guidelines of at, at this yes. point, this is what you should be doing. Okay, um, there's an Irish guy, he lives in Portugal, but his name is David Gowran. Yes. And he does, I was a college professor, so I can say this, he gives a, a information that is worth a three credit college course mm -hmm. on, he doesn't really get in so much of the writing, he just takes it up from where self-publishing really started. He used to work for Amazon, he knows all how the, all that works Correct. behind the scenes. and. He gives you a ton of really excellent because I've had I've seen other people mm -hmm. like, you know in the industry quoting yes. him right so and I, to piggyback I will check David David Gaum G A U G H A M or something R A M G A U G H R A M yes I believe. he's Irish guy he's Irish right? he's Irish yeah. But he's but he's got he's very he's very clear and concise when he talks. He Sometimes he's a little uh, yeah, monotone. Is but, that the guy but, that stands on rocks most of the time? No, no, he's got a beard now. He's got like a long beard now. He's always got oh, yeah. white he's background. Kind of, he's, he's, kind of he's actually quite boring. But yeah. but I, I learned I learned from him. I took a lesson one of his lessons from to do to do a Facebook ad. And actually, it worked out really well. I tried, and he goes, try doing it this way. Like, he just gives you kind of guidelines, and I kind of took notes, and I tried a Facebook ad, and it worked, it worked out really well. I got a bunch of clicks and, and all that. So I'm still still learning because you still have to find, you know, what works for you and what doesn't work for you. Um, Amazon ads, he, he talks about Amazon ads because, yeah, he worked for Amazon. So that's a good resource for you. But bottom line is what you need to do is this. You need to write your book, Okay. There's first draft, second draft, third draft, okay? When you finally have your third draft, normally, this is normal, okay? Um, we're not really normal people, but okay. <laughs> anyway, uh, for the most part, generally, okay? Uh, so you have first draft, second draft, third draft, and then it goes to your editor, right? Once you find your editor and they edit your book, um, you need to send it to some beta readers. If you have good friends, Family, family, and eh, not too much because family, they, they love you, they're your family, and they're not going to be good critics. Or, or you take it, a little bit of it and you take it to a critique group. So you can do either or. I like to do the critique group because I feel like other authors or, or other writers have a little more, um, have refined their art of writing. So they'll say, hey, you know, I think you should do this over here. I think you should, this first person doesn't work or blah, 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 whatever. 
I find it like that for me. That works for me. But a lot of uh, other writers that I know, they have a group of beta readers. Jay Havener, he's got beta readers, for example. <coughs> and his books are great. I mean, they love them. Um, so that's your next step. Then it's going to be your proofreading, okay? Because they're not necessarily the same people, okay? Your editor is one person. Your proofreader could be another one. Or you can use the read aloud. Okay, that could be your proofreading right there. Once you've got all that done, you're going to format your book into a, um, the correct format that Amazon wants you to. If you want to publish with Amazon, you have to format. So you're going to format your book in three different, two different ways initially. So you're going to format into ebook. Ebook is just a plain eight and a half by 11. You can use Garamond, you can use Times New Roman. Um, double space would be better. I do one and a half spaces. So it all depends. You can do larger writing for the people who have a hard time uh, reading small print. You can do a bigger print. You can do like a 14 print, size 14, uh, which is pretty big in Times New Roman or Garamond. Um, or you can keep it to 12, whatever you want. You can do double space too. Double spacing helps, first of all, it increases your number of pages. It makes your little book go, this book. <laughs> so something like that. Um, and also, um, it's, it's easier on the eyes, the double space. So I, I understand. Okay. So that's the formatting part of it. Okay. Put your page numbers in there. You got to put your, so when you have, when you do an ebook, you have to have a, a, um, a table of contents. The table of contents has to be clickable. So chapter one, you click on it, chapter one with your finger, and it's going to take you to chapter one. If you want to go directly to chapter five, you click on chapter five, it's going to take you to chapter five. You have to have that in an ebook, whether it's for Amazon, whether it's for Smashwords, whether it's for Ingram Spark, doesn't matter who you go with. You have to have your table of contents in an ebook. And it's not that hard to, it no, it's sounds like it's like really difficult, yes. but it's not. Before you get to that point, you have to buy your own ISBN. Okay, let's talk about ISBNs have, for a second. Have Amazon with it. Correct. Now, if you publish an ebook, you do not need an ISBN. If you publish your ebook with Amazon, you do not need an ISBN. Okay? Right. Right. If you publish your ebook with um, Ingram Spark or any other um, publisher, uh, then you're going to need an, uh, buy an ISBN. Okay? Uh, Bowker sells them 10. For three hundred dollars, I think, unless they raise the price, that's the last I understand. B O W K E R is your, but I'm not. That's not the website though. But Bowker, look for Bowker I S B N, and then you'll find it on Google or whatever. The, the. Yeah, it's like so you, the, the ISBN source or something. Yeah, something it's like that. An it's odd, kind of weird, weird yeah. website. Yeah, but look, Google it, you'll find it. So anyway, but for paperback, okay, if you're going to publish your paperback with Amazon, Amazon will issue you an ISBN for free. Okay, you don't have to pay for it, okay? But you're gonna stay exclusive with them because if you take your paperback and you use that ISBN and, and they find that you published with uh, Ingram Spark, you're done. You're done with them. They'll close your account. The, the, I've heard horror stories that Amazon will do. So careful with Amazon. I mean, they're fantastic. They're wonderful, but they're despicable at the same time. They're just, you just gotta really be careful with them. So if you, Give them all like like if you want to go with your ebook. Let's go back to ebooks again. If you want to go to um, to for Kindle, okay, and you get on Kindle Unlimited, you got to make sure that your ebook is not published with anybody else. You have to give them the exclusive, and if you give them the exclusive, every time anybody purchases uh, something on Kindle Unlimited, you get your royalties, okay. Even even if it's for them, it's free because don't forget they pay a membership, just like you're paying Prime. Right? You're paying Prime, but, and you get delivery for free or whatever, but, but you get the TV with it, all the, the channel, the Amazon channel. But all those people who, 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 you know, who have their stories, their movies, their, their series on there, they get, they get all royalties. Okay? So the same goes for the, for the e-books. Okay? Paper? Yes, sir. But if you have your own ISBN, you can uh, publish with Amazon? You can. Correct. Hey, correct. You, if you have your own ISBN. Yeah, because I made the mistake. Correct. Amazon. Right. Pick the, the yeah. ISBN, but then now I cannot. And, I'm not and they'll find out. Those they'll find out. But if you have your own ISBN, you can use your. You need an ISBN for your ebook. You need one for your paperback and one for your hardcover. So three ISBNs you're going to need. Okay. Um, every version of your book now. 
I'm also this year for me is going to be the audiobook this year. Okay, now that's another topic, but I'm just telling you it's another ISBN for the audiobook as well. If you publish your your audiobook with ACX, which is a, a conglomerate of Amazon, then they give you the the yeah. the ASIN number. It's their number. It's their serial number. Okay, they are. Uh, you don't need one. You don't need an ISBN. But if you publish your your audiobook with some of someone else, you're going to need another ISBN number for. Okay, so every version of your book needs an ISBN number, unless you stick with Amazon, then you don't have to worry about that. So, and Amazon has a pretty large distribution. Yeah, yeah. they yeah. distribute all over the world. They have Japan, Germany. I mean, all over the all over the world. So they're they're pretty good. Australia, Canada, and where else do they have? Uh, all of Europe. So it's pretty good. Yes. Uh, just, I was one more thing I was going to say. Oh, go ahead. That I ran into. Yeah. It, let's say you publish, you're ready, you publish the book through Amazon, mm -hmm. you start getting clicks and hits and everything, and you decide you want to go with, uh, they ask you ahead of time if you want to go uh, domestic or national, international. Right, international, yeah. Okay, if you do that, you know, of course you're broadening your base, and anybody can do it, but you okay. also want to have to take one copy of your book and get it copyrighted, meaning you you go to the copyright website, fill out the form, send the money in, and then they will, in, I think it's 30, 60 days, they will send you a piece of paper back that says, this is the copyright that you have. Okay. Because sometimes overseas, people will take your book and modify it and sell it, and you won't get any kind of money at all. Well, uh, how do you actually keep track of that? I mean, I don't even know. Let's, let's, let's clarify our terms before we go any further. Yeah. Not copyright. Registered with the, library with the U.S. Of library of Congress. Thank you. Right. Yeah. That's right. what, I what you're talking about is the Library of Congress. Right. Yeah. right? Well, I'm sorry. Yeah. Yeah. Because yeah. anything we write, we write copyright, the date, the little symbol, right. which is a parenthesis, C parenthesis. Yeah, that's correct. Right. Pops right up. Right. Pops right up. Yep. Your name, all rights reserved, and it's yours. And the year. 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 Copyrighted. But U.S. Library of Congress, yes. And that yes. is good advice. Yes. Yeah. Right. Yes, I registered a book of my now that I have published mm -hmm. with the Library of Congress. Mm -hmm. It's like only five minutes here. Yeah, yeah, take it. That's all yours. Thank, you. Thank you very much. Um, yeah, it's uh, that's that's exactly the, the distinction is there. I honestly don't do anything with the Library of Congress because here's the thing: if somebody's going to copy, they're going to copy you either way, or they're going to copy you little tin bits of you, whatever. I don't care if, if if they feel like my story is so good to be copied, then I'm flattered by that. <laughs> Just change, make sure you change it. I mean, who's who's going to know? Nobody's going to know. Because and how much is it going to cost you to And how much that? is it going to cost you to enforce that? Exactly. Yeah. So that, that is a problem right there that we have. You know, you, yeah, you get a traditional publisher, you know, they, you're protected legally and all that stuff, but, but then the book's not yours anymore. It belongs to the publisher. Exactly. See, there's, there's pros and cons to everything. So, but anyway, going back to you. So once you have your manuscript ready and it's formatted, then you're gonna you're gonna uh, do the ebook version is gonna go on on Kindle KDP, and then the paperback you have to set it up again differently. You don't need a table of contents for the paperback. You can if you want to, uh, but you don't have to have a table of contents. And and then you just gotta make sure. Then you got you gotta get your cover. You gotta have your cover ready, and it's gotta have the the front. You gotta have the spine, and you're gonna have the back. Um, any any cover artist who's decent enough will know exactly what Amazon wants. Okay, no problem. You have to you gotta make sure that you have, um, you know, you gotta have your front cover, you're going to have your spine, and you're going to have your back. Now, what, what I like to do is because we, we've been through this in the, in the, in the past, is don't, don't change color of your spine. That's what I don't do. Because what happens is um, it's never, Amazon's never going to get it right. Okay, and here's a perfect example. Let me show you. You see this? See that? I changed the color of the spine. Look at the spine. You can see it from here. And then you can see that. That's why I don't do that. Keep it all the same color. And make the print very uh, bright and, and readable. That's what I do. See, this one is much different. See? 
different. Same color, pretty much. She just kind of kept the color of the shirt. But see, even this, you can still, and she kind of shadows it. You know, she puts like a little shadow here in the line, but you can still see the line of the, of the back of the spine. So these are all little tricks that a good cover artist will know. Okay, so find yourself a good cover artist. And um, so at least these, these are all mistakes that you make as you go. So. Last but not least. Yes. And nowadays, that little symbol that you put. The on, copyright? The, not the copyright, the, uh, the thing you hit the phone. I can't remember. Oh, the, take a photograph of it. And, QR code. Oh, QR code. QR code. QR code. QR code. Yeah, yeah, QR code. That's great because that takes you right, the person right to your website. Correct. Mm -hmm. well, that's something for marketing. That that's marketing yeah. is, is. So if you, I have these cards for all of my books. I have these like business cards where I have the, the cover of the book on one side, I have the QR code on the other. And if somebody goes, oh, I only read on my Kindle. There is no scam right there. And, yeah. it's just right there on <laughs> and they buy your book right there, right yeah. in front of you. It's a little right. trick I learned. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Trick I learned. Okay. And another one is audiobooks. Oh, well, well, I only read audiobooks. So you know what? Here. Take, take a bookmark. Here. This is our audiobook. Enjoy. <laughs> so, yeah, you know, it's just little tricks of, uh, that you learn, you learn with experience. So, On the audiobooks, yes. I'm in the process of doing mine. Yeah. So, ACX, I'm using ACX. Yeah. Are there any other places? There are, and I think your your best person to know that is Jim. Yeah. Jim Nelson, because he, he does his own audiobooks, and he actually gave a talk one time on, on audiobooks. He, he's a good resource for that. So reach out to him. He's actually getting married today, by the way. Oh, wow. <laughs> yes, I thought he was married, and he's like, well, sorry, I won't be at the, at the meeting because I'm getting married. I'm like, okay. <laughs> <laughs> it's so funny, but yeah, so he's getting married today. So really happy. Okay, guys. Thank so you. it's three o'clock. You guys have any other questions? Yeah. All right. Well, thank you. Oh, yes, sir. Go ahead. Uh, I just wanted to add on to what um, to, the, to the people back stuff. Yes. So Amazon also said that it has to be a minimum of eighty-five pages. Yes. To be a to be a binding. Paper. To be a binding paperback. Yes. Yes, that's correct. Um, Otherwise, it's going to be like kind of like a magazine kind of yeah, thing. Yeah. Yeah. So. That's right. <laughs> Okay, very good. Well, thank you guys very much for coming. We'll see you next month. And congratulations to all the winners. All right. Thank you. Melbourne Beach Library. Oh, yes. Well, next month, it's Melbourne Beach Library, okay, guys? Not here. All right? It's on the website, Melbourne Beach. And I'll be speaking next month. All right.